Elon Musk bought Twitter because he used Twitter. It's as simple as that. And he was infuriated by Twitter's effort to silence people on the Internet. That's how strongly he believed in free speech. He paid $44 billion and immediately lost tens of billions of dollars doing it. And when he took over and looked behind the curtain, he discovered Twitter was really a tool of the global intel agencies to spy on people and emit propaganda. Here it is. You bought Twitter famously. You've got a lot of other businesses and a lot going on. Yes. You said you bought it because you believe in speech, free speech. You've had a lot of hassle since you bought it. In retrospect, was it worth buying it? I mean, it remains to be seen as to whether this was uh, financially smart. Uh, currently, it is, it is not. Uh, you know, we just revalued the company at less than half of uh, the acquisition price. Did you really? Yes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, no, my, my timing was terrible for, for when the uh, offer was made because it was, uh, you know, right before advertising plummeted and yeah. um you, you caught the high water mark i noticed yeah yeah so i must be a real genius here um my <laughs> my timing is amazing um <laughs> since if i had bought it for at least twice as much as it should have been bought for um but some things are priceless and um so the the whether i lose money or not that is a secondary issue compared to uh ensuring the uh Strength of democracy uh, and free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy. Yes. Um, and in, the, the speech needs to be as uh, transparent and truthful as possible. Um, so we've, we've got a, a huge push uh, on Twitter to be as truthful as possible. We've got this uh, community notes feature, which is great. It um, is great. It is awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's like. I saw it this morning. Yeah. It was far more honest than the New York Times. It's, it's great. Yeah. We put a lot of effort to ensuring that community notes does not get gamed or, or have biases. Uh, it is simply cares about what, what is the most accurate thing. Um, and, you know, sometimes truth can be a little bit elusive, but you, yes. but you can still aspire to get closer to it. Yes. Um, uh, you know, and so, um, and, and I think the, the effect of uh, community notes uh, is more powerful than, than people may realize, because once people know that they, they could get noted, um, you know, community noted on Twitter, then uh, they'll think the, more carefully about what they say. Uh, they are likely, it, basically, it's an encouragement to be more truthful and less deceptive. When you jumped into this, though, when you bought it, did you understand, well, clearly you understood its importance, you wouldn't have bought it. Uh, Twitter, yes. Right. But it, it's not the biggest, but it's the most important in the social media companies. But did you understand the kind of ferocity you'd be facing, the attacks you'd be facing from power centers in the country? Um, I thought there'd probably be some um, negative reactions, yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm, not, I, I'm sure everyone would not be pleased with, the, with, with it. Um, but um, at the end of the day, you know, if, if, if the public is happy with it, that's what matters. Um, and the public will speak with their actions. Oh, the, the, I mean, the, 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 you, if, if they find truth, Twitter to be useful, they will use it more. And if they find it to be not useful, they will use it less. If they find it to be the best source of truth, I think they will use it more. You know, now, there's, there's obviously <laughs> a lot of um, organizations that are used to having sort of unfettered influence uh, on Twitter um, that no longer have that. We used and to the New York Times of their of their badge this morning, and then you called them diarrhea. You called them. <laughs> okay. You did. You did. I'm just I'm just quoting you. You you, yes. you described their Twitter feed as diarrhea. I, I said it was the Twitter equivalent Twitter equivalent of diarrhea. Okay, it's not literally diarrhea, but no, no it's a yeah. you know, it's a metaphor, um, <laughs> but an accurate one. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, if you look at the uh, at NY Times uh, Twitter feed, it's uh, unreadable. Uh, it's like, they, because what they do is they, they tweet every single article, even the ones that are uh, boring, even ones that don't make it into the paper. So, uh, so it's just nonstop, is a zillion tweets a day with no, uh, you know, they, they really should just be saying, like, what are the top tweets? Yes. You know, like, what, 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 are the, what, are the, what are the big stories of the day? Uh, I don't know, put out, like, 10 or something, you know, so some number that's manageable, um, as opposed to right now, if you, if you were to follow it, uh, NY, at NY Times on Twitter, you're going to get barraged with like hundreds of tweets a day. Yeah. Um, and your whole feed will be filled with NY Times. So um, that, that's, that's uh, this is something I would recommend actually for all publications, uh, which is uh, for your primary feed, um, only put out your best stuff.
I kind of think I know a thing or two about how to use Twitter because uh, you know I, I was the most interacted with account on the whole system uh, before the acquisition, before, before the acquisition closed. I didn't have the most number of followers, but I had the most number of interactions. And so I clearly know uh, something about how to use Twitter. You know, people's attention is limited, so just make sure you put the stuff that's most important there. So because you know you and people like you do interact on Twitter, it's obviously enormously powerful in shaping public opinion. It's where a lot of ideas and trends are incubated. Yeah. You know it, that's why you Absolutely. bought it. It's also a magnet for intel agencies from around the world. And yes. one of the things we learned after you started opening the books is that they were exerting influence from within Twitter. I mean, it was absurd. Um, Did you know that going in? No. I, since I've been a heavy Twitter user since 2009, um, my it's it's sort of like I'm in the matrix. I mean, I can see like things do things feel right? Do they not feel right? What what tweets are, am I being shown as recommended? Uh, like like I, I get a feel like what, what accounts are making comments? Uh, where are the comments uh, eerily similar? Yeah. Um, and uh, and then you look at the account and it's just obviously a fake photo and uh, you know uh, they, they, it's, it's just obviously a bot cluster. Uh, yes. Over and over again. So I started to get like just more and more uneasy about the the, the Twitter situation. I started I was starting to feel like something's wrong in the state of Denmark here. There's, there's, there's something feels wrong about the platform. It's, it seemed to be just drifting in, in a. I, I couldn't place it exactly. Just ahead of, it, it felt like it was drifting in a bad direction. So then I was like, and and my conversations with the the board and management seemed to confirm my intuition about that. But basically, I was convinced these guys do, do not care about fixing Twitter, uh, and and uh, and I had a bad feeling about where I was headed based on the conversations, conversations I had with them. So then I was like, you know what, I, I I'll try acquiring it and see if that's see if acquiring it is is possible. Um, now I didn't have enough cash to acquire it, so I would need you know support from others, um, from some of the existing investors. Uh, I would also need like a lot of debt and. Um, so it wasn't clear to me whether a, an acquisition would succeed, but I thought I would try. And uh, ultimately, it, it did succeed. Anyway, here we are. Um, but when you got there, and all of a sudden you own it, and all the data on the servers belongs to you. And well, it belongs be, to the people, in my view, but yes. But, but you can see what it is, and you can yes. see what they've been doing, and you can see who's been working there. You, you were shocked to find out that various intel agencies were affecting its operations? Uh, the, the, the degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes, because the DMs are not encrypted. So one of the first, you know, one of the things that we're about to release uh, is the ability to encrypt your DMs. That's pretty heavy duty, though, because a lot of well-known people. Reporters talking to their sources, government officials, the richest people yeah, in the world, sure. they're DMing each other. And the assumption, obviously, it was incorrect, but was that that's private, but that was being read by various governments? Uh, yeah, that seems to be, yes. It's scary. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, so, uh, like I said, we're moving to um, have the DMs be optionally encrypted. I mean, you know, there's like a lot of DM conversations which are, you know, just chatting with friends. It's For sure. not, not not important. Of course. Um, that's hopefully coming out later this month, uh, but no later than next month. Uh, is the ability to toggle encryption on on or off. So if you if you ha are in a conversation you think is sensitive, you can just toggle encryption on, and then no one at Twitter can see wh what you're talking about. They, they could put a gun to my head, and I couldn't I couldn't tell. I couldn't. Uh, the, the, you know, that, that's that sort of the gun to the head test. If, if somebody puts a gun to my head. And I, can I still not uh, see your DMs? That should be that's the acid test. Yes. Um, and that's how that's that's how it should be if you want your. Have you had complaints from various governments about doing this? I haven't had direct complaints to me. I've had sort of like some indirect complaints. I think people are a little concerned about complaining to me directly in case I tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> they're like, uh oh. Uh, so they're sort of trying to be more roundabout than that. You know, I mean, if, if, if I got something that was uh, unconstitutional from the U.S. government, I would send, uh, my reply would be to send them a copy of the you know, First Amendment and just say, like, uh, what part of this are we getting wrong?
<laughs> you have a lot of government. You have a lot of government contracts. Curious. What part of this so. are we getting wrong? Please tell me. I mean, it's a pretty. No, I'm just saying. But you're kind of exposed in your other businesses. So this is a, just in case our viewers aren't following this. This is not. You're not just like a journalist taking a stand on behalf of the First Amendment. You're a guy with big government contracts, giving the finger to the government. Do you think? Um, Twitter will be as central to this presidential campaign as it was in the last several? I think it will play a significant role in elections, not just domestically, but internationally. The goal of new Twitter is to be um, as fair and even-handed as possible, uh, so not favoring any political uh, ideology, uh, but uh, just um, yeah, be, being being uh, being fair at all. Why doesn't uh, Facebook do this? I know that Zuckerberg has said, and I take him at face value, that he. <laughs> I, I, well, I do. I do really? actually in this way that he is a kind of old-fashioned liberal who doesn't like to censor. He has, but he, you know, like why wouldn't a company like that take the stand that you have taken, which is pretty rooted in American traditional political custom, you know, for free speech. My understanding is that um, Zuckerberg spent uh, $400 million in the last election, nominally in a get-out-the-vote campaign, but really fundamentally in support of Democrats. Is that accurate or not accurate? That is accurate. Yes. Does that sound unbiased to you? No, it doesn't. Yes. So you don't see hope that Facebook will approach this as a, a, a non-aligned arbiter? You've allowed Donald Trump back on Twitter. He hasn't taken you up on your offer because he's got his own thing. Right. Do you think he will go back on Twitter? Well, that's that's obviously up to him. Um, you know, my, my, my job is to, uh, I, you know, I, I take the, the freedom of speech just very seriously. So it, it's, um, you know, I didn't I didn't vote for Donald Trump. I actually voted for Biden. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Biden because I, I, I would th think that would probably be inaccurate. Uh, but um, you know, we have difficult choices to make in these presidential uh, yep. elections. It's not. I, I, I would prefer, frankly, that we we, we put someone, just a normal person, <laughs> as president, yep. a normal person with common sense, uh, and whose values are smack in the middle of the country. You know, just. You know, center of the normal distribution, and uh, I think they'll do, that they would be great. You know, I think we have made maybe being president not that much fun. You know, <laughs> to be totally frank. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.